Hi, this is The Philosophical Angle, and I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Nature of Aesthetics. These books are available free for viewing online at www.philosophypublishing.com. The purpose of The Philosophical Angle is to examine the nature of the concepts being used in current media and explicate the nature of these concepts and compare it to how it's being used. This week the subject is terrorism. And so let's explore. Right now in the media there's a tremendous discussion of terrorism and how to combat it And one of the ways is to is for the Defense Department, or particularly the NSA, to do blanket data searches on Americans throughout, throughout the land. And some believe that this runs into the problem of the Fourth Amendment, which protects the individual from unreasonable searches and seizures that may be performed by the government. So how do we how do we combat? I mean, obviously terrorism is a problem. We must suppress it. But do we have the problem of the individual rights as delineated by the Fourth Amendment? And we have what seems to be blanket data mining performed by the government on citizens that are that are not doing anything wrong. It seems that the two shall not come to a satisfactory or cooperative conclusion. So let's go into the nature of terrorism and see what we can find out and see if we can find a solution. First, terrorism comes from individual thought. In other words, when, when somebody makes a thought, from the thought can come physical action, or it can come, it can communicate. And the purpose of communication is to reach out and to tell somebody else for the purpose of cooperation. We cooperate in order to produce goods and services. But we also communicate to proselytize to others about an ideology. About an ideology is what you think how another should live, as well as ourselves. This is uh, particularly prevalent amongst religions, like to get out and spread the word about how they view God and their relationship with God. And, and it's produced great works such as the Bible and the Quran and, and, uh, and I'm sure there are other works. So, uh, and an example of that proselytization is prosel to proselytize is, is, of course, Islam. And the Islamic ideas are spread throughout all throughout the Middle East, internationally, uh, throughout Asia. It's become a, a huge religion, a well uh, spread out religion. And it's through the study of the Quran. <coughs> and the study of the Quran, though, has produced some negative aspects, such as terrorism. There's a there's profiling, and if we profile about those who studied the Quran, some thinks that would be illegal. Because some people feel that profiling is not uh, is a, an unethical way to make your decisions 
as to with whom to cooperate. And we know that racial profiling is clearly against the law. So racial profiling based on whether you're black or white or Asian or Middle Eastern is clearly, long, clearly wrong and against the law. However, profiling, there's another, there's a, there's a second type of profiling. And it's on life's decisions. Not only do we make decisions as to whom should we cooperate with based on, if we make it based on racial, which most people don't, and that's why it's against the law, but uh, law, life's decisions has many aspects to it. And the study of these life's decisions, we can say that it is we can make a probability study or a, probabil a probabilistic observation of decisions. And there's nothing wrong with this. In fact, advertisers do it. They find data on how people make decisions. And this is, would be called profiling. But it's commercial profiling, and it's completely legal and actually quite logical, pragmatic. So there's a probable outcome of the decisions that we make in life. And if we, if we gather these probable outcomes, we can call it profile. It's generated by priorities which are bits of knowledge. And these pieces of priorities that are, not, that are knowledge produce results, decisional results. Let's take an example of a priority. First of all, priorities can come in individually or they can come in groups. For example, we've decided that we're going to buy health foods. And particularly, we've decided to go down to the grocery store and instead of buying white bread this week, we'll buy whole wheat bread. Well, let's say that that came from reading a health food magazine, which advocated eating healthier foods. And, and it gave an example that one of the healthier foods was whole wheat bread. Well, that is, that is a step. What is, what's happened here is that that's a priority that has been established. In other words, you gathered a piece of knowledge that you realized that whole wheat bread is good for you. Okay, piece of knowledge. That piece of knowledge now is stored in your brain, now is moved from informational but to a priority because now you've established that a priority to eat it a little bit, as opposed to white bread, which you like. So you might choose, you establish your priority, you might choose uh, some white bread, which is tasty. But you might take that priority a step further. You want something that's healthy, too. And you've established that it is more important to you to have a healthy diet. And that's a priority based on your knowledge that you got from a health food magazine that gave you a, and after reading it, it gave you a probable cause to buy some whole wheat bread, which is your decision, which was established by a priority, which was between white and whole wheat. So there's a probability percentage that you'll switch if we go to a group example. We just did an individual, but if we, in a, if we, if we number up the number of people, a number of people who have read the, the health food magazine, we can come to the conclusion that probably a certain percentage will establish a priority 
to eat whole wheat bread after reading the health food magazine. Advertisers use this type of data then to sell you more things that are similar to whole wheat bread. So our conclusion here is that profiling or the study of a probable outcome of Islam will cut the need for a blanket data surveillance by the NSA. So by using profiling, which is, which is legal on other than racial profiling, because we don't need to profile based on race. We need to prof profile based on decision making in other areas, whether it's buying bread, whether it's studying the Quran, whether it's proselytizing to others about an ideology. Well, you say, well, why, why should that be profiled? Well, that should be profiled because in the study of the Quran, there's a significant number of verses advocating violence against those who are not Muslims. So let's, uh, let's go to a few of these verses to see if the statement is correct. Throughout the Quran, there is a number, scores, of verses that are, that are violent, that advocate harm to those that are non-Muslim. Such as Quran, verse 2, 191 through 193. And slay them wherever ye find them, and drive them out of the places whence they drove you out. For persecution, as of Muslims, is worse than slaughter of non believers. But if they desist, then lo, Allah is forgiving and merciful. And fight them until persecution is no more, and religion is for Allah. In other words, if you're not a Muslim, you must fight them. However, if you don't fight them, well, however, if they don't fight back, then you, then you are to be forgiving and give them three choices. These three choices are not in this verse, but it is later on in the Quran that we can find out that those three choices are to become Muslim or pay a tax or death. But that's a choice. Another verse from the Quran, Surah 2, that is verse, verse 2. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, verse 2, number 244, when fight in the cause of Allah and know that Allah heareth and knoweth all things. Pretty clear. Fight in the cause of Allah. So if you are not a Muslim, and Muslims believe that even though you might be a person of, the, as they call the book, the Bible, you are not really a true believer in Allah because you haven't followed the, the words of the Prophet Muhammad, who is the final prophet. And so you must take the words of the final prophet, who was given his knowledge through the angel Gabriel, who got it from God. Further. Uh, in the Quran, there are some other uh, verses that indicate that you must that their ideology is to fight against the unbeliever, 
which is the Western society. In, in Surah 2, verse 216, it clearly says, fighting is prescribed for you. In Surah 3, verse 151, soon shall we cast terror in the hearts of the unbelievers, for that they joined companions with Allah, for which he had sent no authority. Here, the Quran speaks of the polytheists, but it also includes the Christians in this because Muhammad felt that they joined Christ with God and that made him actually to God. So Muhammad didn't really understand probably what the Christians, uh, how the Christians' attitude is toward Jesus. But that was his interpretation and so the Muslims uh, do not consider Christians as a monotheist and true believers of the word of Allah uh, since that the Christians believe in the, in the Trinity. And uh, Muhammad actually uh, had a term for this. He called it joining com companions to Allah. In Quran 4, that is Surah 4, verse 74, let those fight in the way of Allah who sell the life of this world or the other. Whoso fighteth in the way of Allah, be he slain or be he victorious, on him we shall bestow a vast reward. Uh, this is the theological basis for, the, uh, for today's suicide bombers. Uh, if you fight in the name of Allah, you'll be rewarded. Uh, clearly, uh, in heaven, with a greater amount of happiness than, uh, n than those who do not directly fight in the name of Allah. Quran, Surah 4, 76. Those who believe fight in the cause of Allah. Quran 8, Surah 8, verse 12. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Therefore, strike off their heads and strike off every fingertip of them. Quite a delineation, quite, an, uh, quite a remarkable set of expressions, but they're not alone. There are scores of these in the Quran. So the Quran clearly states that they are to bring the fight out of the Muslims to the unbeliever, which is any, basically anybody who is not a Muslim. And so with this ideology in place, terrorism is produced, and thus most of the terrorism, 99% of the terrorism throughout the globe, is now being produced by Islam, financed by oil money. And so with this vast terrorism in effect, the United States, of course, wants to gird itself against this will of, of Islam to spread by the, by the sword. And so it now is having a problem deciding whether the Fourth Amendment can be used in this, in our modern society, in the face of the ideologies brought to us, the violent ideologies brought to us by Islam. But I believe it can be. We don't need blanket data surveillance. If we decide that profiling, which is a natural occurrence in every day, decisional matters. When we make a decision whether to buy bread or buy a car, or the results of our, prof of our, of our priorities can be profiled. And if those priorities match an ideology which is violent, 
which is against the Western world, then we need to include it. We need to assemble that information which will provide us with a defense of terrorism. And so that's what I recommend to our government and those who make decisions in the United States. I want to thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next week on The Philosophical Angle.